stepsister stole my fiancé and sent me postcards rubbing it in. Now they're broke and begging me for a job at the family business she was supposed to inherit. I, 28F, was engaged to my boyfriend from college about 4 years ago. We had been together throughout college and then got engaged at the age of 23. We were engaged for a year but a week before our wedding, he took off with my stepsister. My ex-fiancé Greg, 28M, and my stepsister Melissa, 28F, eloped a week before we were supposed to get married and left nothing but a letter for me, where Greg mentioned that he had started an affair with Melissa a couple of months after we got engaged. And had realized that he couldn't get married to me because that would be unfair to both of us and also to Melissa because they were the ones actually in love. He said that he believed that the universe had just used me to lead him to his true love, so he couldn't be with me anymore and cheat us all out of a happy future by marrying me. And that was it, they ran away and I didn't see them again until recently. Greg's parents covered the entire cost of the wedding and I didn't have to pay anything because they were so embarrassed by what their son had pulled. But that was pretty much the last interaction that I had with his family since we had nothing more left to talk about. My family, however, was more than embarrassed. My parents were livid and my father had actually started considering hiring a private detective so he could track down where the two of them were and drag them back home for answers. Just to let you know, my father is actually my stepdad, but he has been my father ever since I was really little. And I have always addressed him as such because to me, he is my only father's and I have never known my biological dad. My dad had left our family shortly after I was born and my mother never met him again as he had signed away his rights over me and they had never been married. She then married my father when I was 8 years old. Melissa and I used to go to the same school and that's how our parents met each other but for some reason, Melissa decided that she didn't like me and then went on to treat me badly for the next couple of years. She was a bully in the truest sense of the word and she and her friends would constantly pick on me when we were at school. It didn't even stop when we got home and she would just keep looking for opportunities to make me feel bad. I did complain to my parents several times and they tried to reprimand her but it was just not enough. And she wasn't even scared of our parents, so she continued to bully me and my years in school were a total nightmare because of her and all her cronies. Just like my dad was not in the picture, Melissa's mom wasn't around either. But that was because her mother had passed away a few years after she was born. Her mother had passed away in the middle of the night from an epileptic episode. So any time that my mother tried to discipline her, she would tell her that she had no right to school her because she wasn't her real mom. And my father did try to get her to stop bullying me but it didn't work because she just wasn't scared of anything. They had tried everything from scolding her to trying to talk to her nicely but nothing ever got her to stop picking on me. Occasionally they would even threaten to send her away and she would dare them to do it because she knew that they were all empty threats. And that was just her in middle school, so with time, she only got much worse. By the time we were in high school, she had already taken up a bunch of bad habits and was pretty much a juvenile delinquent. She had started smoking and would occasionally sneak out of the house to go drinking with her friends, who were just as bad as her. It wasn't until she got arrested with her friends one night for breaking into somebody's house while drunk that our parents finally decided to send her away and get her the help that she obviously needed. After a few weeks of begging and protesting, my parents finally got her to go to a rehabilitation center for troubled teens. She wasn't happy about it but my father had been very firm and had said that if she wanted to live with us and be a part of this family, then she would have to get better. Because he couldn't allow this behavior to go on and let her trouble everybody else since she was becoming a menace to society. She left in our sophomore year and didn't come back until we had already graduated since she had enrolled in a school near the rehab center and was living with her aunt. I didn't see her for those couple of years, mostly because I wasn't interested in how my biggest bully was doing. My parents would visit her every weekend and would ask me if I wanted to come along but the answer to that was always no. Her friends started ignoring me and pretended like I didn't exist after she left, which improved my high school experience considerably since now I didn't have anyone bullying me constantly. Melissa had continued with her education and rehab and when came back, the first thing that she did was apologize to me for whatever she had put me through. She seemed a life calmer and I actually thought that she had changed for the better so I forgave her. We were about to go off to college in a few months anyway so it didn't matter. Once we started college, I moved out and so did she. We would only come back for the holidays and she was much nicer to me after that. And by nicer, I don't mean that she would actually behave nicely with me. I mean that she would just ignore me instead of picking on me every chance she got like she used to do in the past. If I'm being honest, it was a much welcome change because I would rather be ignored than be bullied. Our parents noticed this but didn't try to force us to get along or act like sisters because, given our history, this was more than good. And then I started dating Greg and after being together for a year, I decided to bring him home for Thanksgiving to introduce him to my parents. All of us got along really well and for the first time, I noticed that even Melissa was taking an interest in the conversation, which was a rare occurrence ever since she came back from rehab. She and Greg were actually getting along and after started dating him, she started expressing more of an interest in being friends with me and would often reach out to me to just talk, which she never did before. I didn't understand what was going on and I had a tiny suspicion that maybe she had a thing for Greg. So one day, I decided to just ask her if the real reason she was trying to be friends with me was because of Greg or something because I was paranoid. 
and she laughed at that and told me that that wasn't the case but Greg had mentioned what a great relationship he had with his siblings at our first dinner together while talking about his family. And that's what had made her rethink the way she had been behaving with me ever since she came back, which is why now she was trying to make amends and improve our relationship. It had nothing to do with Greg directly but he had definitely played a role by being the catalyst and forcing her to think about our relationship. She told me that she had held me responsible for her being sent away for the longest time but eventually, she had come to terms with the fact that it hadn't been my fault and she had brought this on to herself with her terrible behavior. So it was about time that she stopped punishing me for it and started trying to really become a part of this family. And that wouldn't be possible until she apologized to me from the bottom of her heart and actively tried to work on our relationship. I'm an emotional fool and what she said to me that day touched me. So like an idiot, I decided to forgive her and be friends with her. And I guess that's what hurt the most because she betrayed me after being friends with me. We were on good terms for a really long time and she was actively involved in the wedding prep. I wouldn't say that we were the best of friends but we were not as bad as we used to be. While we were rebuilding our relationship we would meet at least once or twice every month and talk to each other so by the time I got engaged we were doing well and I had introduced her to Greg in person as well. Before the engagement whenever we would meet at family events and stuff, they would behave pretty normally so I never suspected anything because I had no reason to. Even after the engagement, they continued to behave as if nothing was going on and not even for a second did I think that maybe Greg had a thing for Melissa. It simply didn't ever occur to me because Greg put up a really convincing act of being in love with me throughout while he was cheating on me with Melissa. And even she was very convincing at pretending to be my friend. So I didn't find out the truth until it was too late and they were already gone. My parents wanted to trace them and bring them back home but I convinced them to leave it alone because I just wanted to forget about everything. It was bad enough that the two of them had made a complete fool out of me and ran away a week before I was supposed to get married. I absolutely didn't want more drama because I was really depressed and just didn't have it in me. I spent the next couple of weeks doing nothing but working and sleeping because I wanted to avoid confronting my feelings. My heart was obviously broken and I was just numb but the worst was yet to come. A couple of weeks after my supposed wedding day, I received a postcard from Melissa and she was in California. But that wasn't it because she had also used a bunch of photos of her with Greg and they appeared to be really happy. It was very obvious that she was rubbing it in my face because she had even mentioned that she was sorry about the surprise before my wedding. But she wasn't sorry, obviously, and it was just meant to anger me. It was then that I realized that she had never really forgiven me for what happened all those years ago and still held me responsible for the fact that she had been sent away. And neither had she even wanted to be my friend at any point, she had just used me to get to Greg and I had trusted her and let her use me as a stepping stone. It was a really diabolical plan, I'll have to give it to her. For days after she sent me that postcard, I couldn't even sleep because I was losing my mind over this. It was a really traumatic experience for me and I had to get therapy for months to undo all the damage and deal with my trust issues. The postcard wasn't even a one-off incident and she sent me postcards of her and Greg for months after that. It only ended after about a year because I hadn't responded to her or played into the drama. Our parents were really upset about it and naturally, cut all ties with her after that. They didn't even try to reach out to her after the first postcard. And that was a huge loss for Melissa because she was all set to inherit her dad's business. She was a business major and that was a part of the reason why she had chosen that route for herself because she wanted to join her father. But of course, after what she had pulled off our father cut all ties with her and told me that I could join him instead because he felt like he had to make up for everything in a major way. But I didn't have a business degree and I actually was a history major. And that pretty much had nothing to do with business so I needed to learn the ropes first. My father said that it was not a problem because he was willing to teach me everything that he knew so that I could eventually take over the business instead of Melissa. So I agreed and started to work under him so I could learn how to run the business and he could retire and hand over the reins to me after a while. I worked really hard for a couple of years and last year, I was finally promoted and my father retired. It was an amazing feeling because I had started from scratch and had to learn everything. But now everything was smooth sailing under me and has been for some time. Thanks to me, my parents can now spend more time together without worrying about the business because I'm taking care of it. It's been this way for quite a while and I pretty much stopped thinking about Greg after I started working for my father because that took up all my time. That, along with therapy, helped me move on and I would say now, I have completely moved on and don't think about them or what they did. I never thought that they would ever reach out to me again, let alone ask for my help. Because it would take a lot of guts and an utter lack of functioning brain cells to ask me to help them out after they screwed me over and made a fool out of me then went on to rub it in my face as well. But I guess that Melissa and Greg really do lack brain cells because that's what they reached out to me a few days back. I was at home because it was the weekend and around lunchtime I heard someone frantically ringing my doorbell. I thought it was the pizza that I had ordered so I didn't think much of it. When I opened the door, I received the biggest surprise of my life when instead of a delivery guy, I found Melissa standing outside my house, looking really worried. I didn't know what to say so I just silently waited for her to say something. While looking at her, I realized that she was definitely here to ask for help because she was looking destitute and her appearance gave her away. 
Even as a kid Melissa always used to dress well but when I saw her, she was dressed in old clothes which were all faded and had obviously been purchased a really long time ago. Her jeans were way too short and she herself looked like she hadn't been eating. I had already made up my mind that whatever she was about to ask me, the answer was going to be no. So when she said that she needed me to help her out because she and Greg had been struggling for a really long time. Ever since he had lost his job a couple of months ago, he had started drinking instead of looking for a new job and even though she had been trying to find a job for herself she couldn't because she had quit everything to stay at home and do all the household work when she first moved away with Greg. And because of that she hadn't been working in the recent past and the gap in her resume made her a weaker contender for all the jobs that she had been applying to. She said that she had heard from a couple of relatives that our father had retired and had handed over the reins of the business to me, so now she was here to ask me if I would be willing to hire Greg and give him something to do. Melissa told me that she had come all the way here only to ask me for help and said that she was sorry for whatever she did in the past but now, she was counting on me to bail her out. She told me that she hadn't even approached our parents yet and had come straight to my house to ask for help because she knew that I had a kind heart and she felt awfully guilty about betraying me in the past but she was sure that I wouldn't turn her away now that she needed my help. Her entitlement was so ridiculous that I ended up laughing in her face and told her to apply somewhere else because I don't hire cheaters. Then I shut the door on her face and walked back into the living room, preparing to call the cops if she didn't get off my property soon. Thankfully she did go away that day but she hasn't left me alone yet. After her visit the first thing that I did was call our parents and tell them about it. They told me that they had heard from a couple of their neighbors that Melissa was back in town without Greg but they hadn't brought it. And we live in a relatively small town so everybody knows everybody. We were quickly able to find out that Melissa had been here for about a week before she finally paid me a visit and had been living with one of her cronies from high school. It was probably her high school friend who had told her where I was living and also about the fact that I had inherited the business that was rightfully supposed to be hers and now she was really milking that. A couple of days after she visited me, she decided to go meet our parents to tell them how heartless I was being. She had expected them to be on her side, now that she had the upper hand on who was suffering more. But she couldn't have been more mistaken because my father told her that the business was now mine to run and I could make whatever decision that I deemed fit. He didn't have any say in it anymore because he wasn't going to micromanage me. And my mother reminded her that she was the one who had screwed me over by running away with my fiancé after pretending to be my friend for years. And now she completely deserved whatever was happening to her. She had lost the right to ask any of us for help. Especially me, after she had even been sending me postcards to torment me. She tried to defend herself by saying that it was all in the past and she is a different person now but my parents told her that she had to leave because they wanted nothing to do with her anymore. That led to her throwing a tantrum at their house and claiming that they had always favored me over her and treated me like the golden child. She told my father that in spite of being his own flesh and blood, he had never treated her like that and acted as if I was his only daughter and she was worth nothing to him. When he told her that he had made more allowances for her behavior in the past than any other parent in the world would, she said that it still didn't matter. I had everything that she was supposed to, including the business that I was showing off about. She said that it wasn't even her fault that Greg had fallen for her and wanted to spend his life with her instead of me but for some reason, she was the one being punished for it and claimed that the postcards that she had sent were meant to be a genuine apology and she wasn't even trying to torment me. And honestly, I haven't been able to stop thinking about that since my father told me what she said. In a way, it's true that she was supposed to inherit this business and be in my place but she really lost it because of her own actions. I had no part to play in that. I never told my father to cut her out of his life and hand over the business to me. He did it of his own volition and it feels kind of unfair for her to blame me for this. Also, the thing that she said about me being the golden child is absolutely not true. But I can see why she would feel that way because, in her head, she was the one who was sent away because I complained about her and her incessant bullying. A parent deciding to send their kid away is a really big deal and I know it was rough on my father but again, that's not his fault or my fault. If he hadn't taken the necessary steps to prevent it, Melissa might have turned out to be a criminal or something because that's the way she was going. Apart from that, I don't really think she was trying to apologize with the postcards and was probably just trying to cover it up by saying that it was supposed to be a genuine apology. I just feel bad for her because her husband turned out to be completely useless and now, she has to bail him out. For that, she actually came to me and I can't imagine how difficult that must have been for her, so I kind of regret treating her the way that I did. I have everything now and she has nothing. So I can't help but feel sorry for her, that's just who I am as a person. Besides it has been a long time and I don't feel like holding on to that grudge anymore but I also don't want to help her out in any way. The most that I can do is give them my sympathy but I really don't want to hire them or help them out with money. I think it's enough that I even feel bad for her after everything that she put me through, most people probably wouldn't bat an eye. The only reason I even feel bad for her right now is because this business was actually supposed to be hers and now that I'm in a position of power, I'm finally getting back at her and I just feel like it's not right. It might be because of what she said about me being the golden child or maybe just plain old imposter syndrome but I feel weird about this. So Ida for refusing to hire my ex-fiancé who eloped with my stepsister now that they're struggling with money and helps them out?
Update 1, I didn't have any idea what to do and the comments here just confused me even more because some of you said that I was doing the right thing by turning them away. And the other half said that I had always been the golden child and that is why Melissa started to act out. So this wasn't as helpful as I had thought it was gonna be. I decided to talk to my parents because every single time that I have had to face problems in my life, I have always approached my parents for advice and I did the same this time as well. They told me that I had no reason to feel sorry for Melissa because everybody had gone above and beyond to try and make her a better person. But if she wasn't willing to turn over a new leaf at any point in her life, then there was not much that we could do for her. My father told me that he had every intention of letting her take over the business, had she behaved herself and been a good daughter but she failed at everything and made a total mockery out of our family. After that, she would be a fool to expect him to let her take over or even be a part of the family anymore. And that made me feel considerably better because talking to my parents always does. So I'll try not to let myself feel guilty about things that I don't do anymore. Update 2, about one week has passed since Melissa showed up at my door and since her visit to my parents, we haven't heard from her. I almost thought that she had gone back to Cali to Greg until today when she showed up at my workplace to make a scene. It was horrible because she just waltzed into the place since she had known the ins and outs ever since she was a child and got in without alerting security quite easily. Then she went on to take her place in front of my office and started to shout about how I had stolen this business from right under her nose by pretending to be a good little girl for our parents and constantly being a bootlicker so they would approve of me. And apparently, I was responsible for vilifying her by falsely accusing her of bullying me throughout our childhood and even talking my father into sending her to rehab just so I could cement my position as the golden child of the family. She went on to announce that this business was supposed to be hers but now I was refusing to even let her be a part of it because I was jealous that Greg had chosen her over me, unlike our parents who had always favored me. And since I wasn't used to being looked over, I lost my mind and turned our parents against her. When I heard the yelling, I decided to go out and check it out for myself after calling security. I tried to tell her to shut up but she went on for a good few minutes until she was finally thrown out of the building. I decided to call my dad before calling the cops to get his opinion and he was furious so he told me to go right ahead and call the police. Thankfully when the cops showed up, she was still lurking nearby. Probably waiting for me to leave the building so she could yell at me or maybe do something worse, like physically attack me. The cops took her away and charged her with trespassing and disturbing the peace but they're minor charges and she can probably get off with either just a fine or maybe community service, worst case scenario. But it's certainly going on record and that's never good. I told my dad that she had been charged and arrested and expected him to be a little upset about it but he only seemed exasperated and told me that he was just tired of this and wanted a break from having to deal with her insanity. I honestly feel bad for him because it can't be easy having a daughter like Melissa and being blamed for everything that goes wrong in her life, even though most of the time it's her own fault. Honestly, we have all been really patient. Update 3, okay, so I think Melissa has returned to California because it's been a couple of days and we haven't heard from her. Which is weird because we expected her to lash out at us after her arrest. But my dad asked around and was told that a couple of people saw her heading towards the airport the other day, so I'm assuming that she has left. It's honestly a huge relief that she is gone now because I was genuinely afraid that she was going to try to do something explosive to get our attention next and that's always bad news. I don't know what she is going to do about the whole situation with Greg now because it seems unlikely that she is going to get help from anyone else after this. I just hope that she finds something to do and gets out of this mess. And no, I'm not even being kind or compassionate right now. I have very selfish reasons to say this and it's because I know that if she doesn't find a way out of this mess, then she will just come back here with Greg and bother us some more. And I don't want that, so I genuinely hope and pray that either she or Greg finds a job and are able to support themselves. Either way, I don't have to hear from her for a couple of weeks at least and I'm relieved that this nightmare is over now.